Good evening, everybody. I'm gonna get started here in just a second. I wanna see if I can share it. Ooh, I don't know if I can do it from my phone. Um, see if I can get this shared over to the fan club. Let me grab the computer real quick and see if I can do it that way. Well, not the, the fan club, to the garden of creativity. <clears throat> If I can do this from my phone without ending the video, give me one second. I've got my laptop set up right behind me. Let me see if I can jump over here really quick. This has to connect first. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and pull the stamp sets out I'm considering using. I'll have you guys help vote, so I'll lay these here if you guys want to look at them. Um, I asked in the Garden of Creativity group for you to choose one of the options I had listed for tonight's live. Um, so I asked whether you wanted masculine, whether you wanted an animal, or a beachy summer theme. Um, the most votes was masculine, um, but animal was right behind it. Hello! So I figured I would try to encompass all of that <laughs> and go with something that was summer beachy, an animal, fish, um, but still masculine. So I'll lay these here and I'm going to just come right behind myself to the laptop and see if I can share this live into the garden page. But again, if you could pick between the two of these, either the puffer fish or this beautiful angel fish, and I'll see if anybody comments below and I will use one of these two on my project tonight. I hope you guys had a good day today. I know the weather was amazing here. Oh my goodness. It was really warm. It would have been a great beach day, actually. We did not go to the beach. I think they did reopen the beaches here. Um, and I washed the car. <laughs> I don't know if that counts as something. Oh my goodness, I forgot too many kind of tabs open here. Okay, here we go. Let me see the video. Let me see if I can get this shared to the garden page and then I will get started. So no votes yet, puffer fish or angel fish. Okay, let's see, here we go, share. <clears throat> Let me get this shared over there and we will get rolling. Join me now, that's what I'll type. All right, and again, uh, my name is Marsha. Oh, angelfish, okay, deal, angelfish it is. Okay, again, I'm Marsha, I'm one of the newbie DT members for Jada Blossom, I'm super excited to be on this team. Awesome, I think we're all shared over there. I will mute my laptop behind me, and I'm sure it will go to sleep before I'm finished. <clears throat> I may not completely finish the project on the live, just to avoid it being too lengthy, but we will definitely get things started and you'll see um, how my creative process works. So we'll do the angel fish. Um, I've been on a watercolor kick lately, so we will be watercoloring this sweet little fishy. I've got a scrap of blue paper up here above me that we'll, we will be using for an ocean background. So since we're doing the angel fish, I don't know that this other option will work, but I'll show you some of the ideas I had pulled for um, how to create this. So one option was going a very different route and putting the fish in a jar. Uh, the angel fish image is kind of large, so I don't think that's really gonna work for this unless we hang him over the side, which we definitely could. Let's see. So we could still do that. I think that would still be really cute, <clears throat> although he would not entirely be within the jar. So that may not be quite as good an option, but I'll leave it, <laughs> I'll leave it out there. Um, fish in jar or I think we'll probably just stick with the luggage tag. This is one of my favorite die sets, the luggage tag dies. I use these a whole lot. <laughs> so um, I'm leaning more towards this just for the scale of the fish. I think it might look better there. So as I'm stamping the fish to color, you guys let me know if anybody has a preference there. I will work with that. <clears throat> Make this a wee bit more interactive. 
Okay, so I've just got a piece of watercolor paper here. Let's stamp this bad boy. You know, I've never stamped the angelfish before. I've used the seahorse a few times. I love him. All right, so let's line him up here. I'm gonna just use some VersaFine ink. I do like to typically uh, emboss my ink when I'm gonna watercolor because it helps keep me in the lines, but here lately I've been going rogue and not doing that. So we aren't doing that. Besides, it's really noisy. And my daughters just went to sleep. Although I think they're gonna sleep pretty hard. We've had a big day. Mush. Oh, good. That's pretty good. I think I've got one little divot here on the bottom. We'll see if we can clean up that line there. Looks good to me. Let me, where did the lid go? Oh man, oh boy. Here it is. I'm gonna pop this up here above me. I'll be using that again. Dirty rag to wipe off my stamp. Pop the misty over here to the side. Gotta try to keep it as tidy as possible because man oh man, it gets out of control so fast. <laughs> One of my handy tricks for watercoloring, because <laughs> I don't have a palette here, um, I use my bone folder to scribble on. So that's what we're gonna be doing tonight. <laughs> So I've got my little cup of water. Let me grab just a couple brushes here. Uh, yeah, I'll keep both of them here. The stamper thing that I was using, <clears throat> so Anne Marie was asking the stamper thing. This is a uh, Misty stamping tool, stamping platform, I guess is what it's called. This is the mini size. Uh, it allows you to repeatedly stamp in the same spot. So you put your paper in, magnets hold your paper down, so that way if you don't get a perfect impression the first time, it allows you to whack it back on there with ink a couple more times. So, I love it. <laughs> there are uh, various stamping platforms available out there, I will say that. This is just one of them. All right, let me move these out of the way a little bit because my paper's kind of long. All right, so since this is going to be a dude card, I will try to keep it with boyish colors. And since he's gonna be swimming in a blue ocean, I will not use blue, I don't think, but I will select, let's see, a darker green. Hmm. I know yellow just seems so normal. Maybe a, an orange would be pretty. Hello, Miss Darlene from Canada. I like this color. So we'll do a green and an orange and I'll pull yellow in too. You always have, <laughs> masculine cards can be difficult. I agree. Uh, I always feel like I have to go more case with them. Um, case being clean and simple. It just feels easier that way. I don't know that dudes really want a super busy card. Um, and I did have some other fun ideas if somebody had chosen um, some of the other options. So I might do some of those next month for Father's Day coming up. <clears throat> or see if I can do another live the end of this month. But I really want to play with the, the mustache set, the die sets, because I think those would be lots of fun. All right, so I am scribbling my distress markers in pine needles, ripe persimmon, and squeezed lemonade onto my double duty bone folder. Um, the distress markers are the same thing as your distress inks in those cubes. You can always just, if you wanted to watercolor with them, hello, Christine. <clears throat> uh, you could just take that cube and smush it on a piece of acetate, plastic, anything. As you see, I've used my counter before. Yes, I am that type of crafter. <laughs> so anything that, any, just anything that's non-porous that you could pick the ink up from. So let's see, I think we will start with, hmm, I'll do yellow here, and uh, one thing I love about watercolor is it's just it just looks so fun to me. It doesn't have to be perfect. I think that's something to remember. Um, you want to keep moving while it's wet to create more of a uh, seamless look. Um, otherwise, if it dries, 
while you're applying the color, I will cover over that with white gel pen when I'm done. So you needn't worry about that. Uh, it looks more seamless this way. You can see if you stop in between applying the ink or paint, um, you'll kind of see a, a line there. And I'm trying to avoid that. <coughs> so I will add some of the green here. Again, that was, what color was that? Pine needles. And I will add more shading. Hello, Miss Irene. I'll add more shading once this first layer kind of dries. <clears throat> but I love how soft the color looks and see it bled in here to the yellow a little bit. That is totally okay. I'm gonna pull some more yellow in for this stripe and then do green on the bolder part of the body. And yes, this is not what they really look like, but you know, fish don't really have adorable little cheek blush either. So I think it's important to have fun with your images as well. Thank you. Oops, I picked up that orange. So let's go back to the pine needles. Just gonna pull that in. I will try to get this card blogged um, with all the supplies. So if you want to know what I use, don't feel like you've got to worry yourself with those details now. I will be sure to get them on a blog so you can just look at it and just kind of have fun watching right now if you wish. See see that line there? That's because it started to dry a bit. If I'm going off camera, I, said, I apologize. Let me add some more dark there. Besides, he's a fish. Using watercolor is kind of a, a fun medium, don't you think? Some more yellow. I might have to scribble more yellow here. Let's see if we can make make it last here. I'm gonna pull more green for the tail. Let's see, it went into that yellow a little bit. That's okay. I do want to make that not quite as. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just dabbing off my brush uh, where I see any kind of color there. So that looks good first. I'm gonna scribble more of my pine needles over here. I used all of that just about. <clears throat> okay, so Crystal just asked uh, what paper I'm using. This is just watercolor paper. Hi, Miss T. Okay, so let's see if we can just add some more. I gotta move these magnets out of my way. Oh my goodness. More water. I guess I use my fingers as well. See how we're gonna be able to get some more definition there. Just a bit. Um, so Irene just asked if we could use regular white cardstock for watercoloring. I would not recommend doing that. It does not absorb the water as well. Um, you might see some buckling of your paper. Well, you would definitely see some buckling of your paper. You might see some paper pilling if you try to apply multiple layers. Uh, so if you're going to use, say, your inks to paint, which is essentially what I'm doing here, I would recommend getting some watercolor paper for that. Now, you don't have to use watercolor. You can use any other coloring medium. So if, if all you had was, oh look, I went over there. Um, if all you had was just regular paper, you can still do this uh, with just say markers or pencils or something. Or if you wanted to just do flat color, which you definitely could without any, any uh, extra variation color, you just kind of went straight across, just kind of like using Crayola markers, like for kids, for example, you could still do that. You know, I've, I've played with my daughter's Crayola markers just to kind of see what I could do with them. Um, Cause we like to downplay a lot of the other items and you know what? They're fun too. So if that's what you have, give it a try. 
uh, you might surprise yourself. And watercolor paper can start to pill and stuff too if you apply too much, so. Oh gosh, I, I appreciate that you think I make it look so easy. And I'd be more than happy to do this again on another live. I do love playing with a watercolor like this. So if this is something you guys are interested in seeing again, please, please let me know. I'm just adding more in here um, to darken some of the colors. Let's see, I don't know if I've got any more yellow here. I won't spend too much more time on him uh, so we can move on to the rest of the project. And that's essentially it, I think. I'm gonna wipe off my, my palette. <laughs> Let me pull out a little bit of pink for his cheek. Thank you, I love the orange too. I think it's, man, we need to remember dudes like color too. And orange and blue are opposite colors on the color spectrum. And I love to do that. So, um, oh, I'm sorry, I scribbled Warren lipstick uh, to use for his little cheek. I probably scribbled more than I needed. Okay, let that dry just a bit. I'm gonna try to pull some more so I can just add a little bit more darker here. A little bit more darker. Oh my goodness. Hello, bully. Let's see. We made, I know it's warm outside, but we like to eat soups year round. I don't know about you guys. <clears throat> and we made um, some homemade French onion soup with sandwiches for dinner. And it was so good. <clears throat> it's fun when your kids help you cook they will eat it. So win-win. All right, so I'm gonna put my markers away. Again, you see I just used very basic colors. And you can use any coloring medium. Again, you know, whatever you have on hand, just play with that. That's the fun of it. Okay, so while that's drying and before I try to add his white spot back to his eyeball, I'm gonna cut this out really quick. Let's see, I'm just gonna cut around this. Because, you know, fussy cutting is just so much fun to watch people do. <laughs> but it is a necessary part of the process. Or you could use a scan and cut. But um, I'm glad I decided to color this on the live because you guys had some really good questions. So I'm going to try to do this quickly and carefully. I do like to leave a border. I know everybody has a personal preference with that. Um, I do like the border. Ooh, I'm glad you like that soup. Irene likes that soup too. I love French onion soup. You know, it's funny is we we actually ventured to Costco today. We all wore masks, um, but we went in and got these adorable little brioche, split brioche rolls for sandwiches. So we had little ham and cheese sandwiches toasted on the brioche rolls with French onion soup for dinner, and it was so good. Man, I love caramelized onions, and that just smells so good while it's cooking, too. Oh, man. I put them on everything. I love to put them on my sandwiches. It instantly makes a ham and cheese sandwich so much better. If you've never tried it and you like onions, I highly recommend. I usually have some in the refrigerator. That's true, yes. Soup with a salad is a wonderfully light meal in the summer. I always joke with my husband that <clears throat> soup never leaves me full for too terribly long. That's why I don't eat, like to eat just soup, especially for lunchtime, you know, because I get so hungry afterwards. Well, like, you know, a couple hours later. Okay, let's come around his little nose. Does, does a fish have a nose? I don't know, this line's a little too wide for me. The, the white border around the fish. Ooh. Oh gosh, don't you hate when you try to get in there? Not cut your finger off, not end up cutting too close. There we go, you gotta just catch that edge of the paper just a little bit. Come on! Ugh, we might just have to call it quits. I'm not giving up. No, 
no, no. Okay, that works. Scissors away, let me grab my gel pen. <clears throat> oh, hi, is it Luzana? I've never known how to say that, oh gosh. If I messed it up, please correct me. We've been in groups and teams before. Sometimes I just don't know how to pronounce it right, so forgive me, it's, it's not that I don't want to. I am probably gonna add another little dot right up here, just because I want to. And you could go nuts and we could add all kinds of little uh, reflective marks if my gel pen will decide to work. Of course it's not, you know, because I'm trying to do this and you guys are watching. You can't even really see it right there anyway, so I'm just gonna set this off to the side because we finished our fishy fishy. Oh, and you can see right here where the green changed. That's just from adding the ink. That's just kind of the fun of watercolor. If that bothers you, um, <laughs> be more careful to keep it real wet as you're applying the color. Oh, thanks, Miss T. I know, I, <clears throat> I love the very summery colors. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, this is Marsha. I am Marsha. That is who you are watching. I'm going to leave the stamp set up here in case we decide to use one of these sentiments. Um, but I had initially pulled the fish on set because uh, I thought it would be fun to maybe use some of these fish in the background, especially because they look a little freaked out. And maybe one of these because my husband's birthday is coming up. <clears throat> and he does like to fish. So uh, let's see. I think we're gonna do the tag, but did anybody want me to really attempt to do the jar? Even though a fish in jar doesn't really work. <laughs> I mean, we could still get the whole point across. So since it, there are several of you on, <clears throat> would you like me to stick with the luggage tag or would you like me to do fish in jar for my project? Any votes before I move on? <clears throat> or it's crafter's choice. Tag, okay. First vote, <clears throat> tag it is. But I think I am gonna do fish jar with the tiny puffer fish, because I'll show you. Look at this little guy. Look, they can call me at the same time. Whoopsie. We'll just let that one slide. <clears throat> And you might ask, why do I have the cloud stencil? But I will show you. <laughs> okay, let me move these off to the side for right now. Oh, little fishy, don't get lost. <clears throat> so I'm gonna die cut the front smaller tag panel from this light blue scrap of card that I have above me. <clears throat> Excuse me. My husband is working tonight. And I didn't tell him I was going live. <laughs> so he's probably like, why the heck aren't you answering? But that's okay. I'm just gonna stick it right here. My daughter decided to cut something out of this, so we've got a lot of ragged cuts on this. I let my, my daughters craft with my stuff. <clears throat> oh good, everybody voted. Oh, we had one fish in jar. Okay, I will, um, is it Lucana? I don't wanna say your name wrong. Um, I will do the fish in jar. <clears throat> I will, because I wanna see how that comes together. I won't do it tonight. Maybe I'll save that for another live. If you wanna see it live, or I'll just make it and blog it. Okay, so we have the blue piece here. Oh, I do have my poker tool. Sometimes I just use the uh, pointy end of my scissors. It's whatever is closest. <laughs> I can call you Lou. Again, I'm sorry if I pronounced it wrong. I know my husband's got a different name because he's not from here. <clears throat> and I always made it my goal to, you know, anytime I met somebody that had a different name to say it properly because people mess my name up all the time too. All right, so we've got the blue layer. I'm going to do white from this one. Do I have a scrap of white? I should. What craft would be kind of cool? 
burr. Ooh, I have a big enough piece. Boo! I'll have to cut another piece for that. I might do that off, uh, off of my pepper trimmer way over here and just slice this up right now. Okay, so here's a white piece. I thought I had a piece big enough. We'll go ahead and chop this. <coughs> I know, Anne-Marie said she loves these tags. These, these are my go-to. Um, and one thing I really like about them is um, I, I've mounted them to a card and left it flipping at the top, um, which I thought was a lot of fun. Because I think I'm going to allow this one to flip open too. But I will go ahead and cut this, um, this piece from the white as well while we're doing this. Just because. So there's a lot of fun ways you can use them. You don't have to adhere them together like that. <coughs> You can make it like a tag card, or you could always partially die cut and leave this part um, attached here to make it like a folding luggage tag, which would be kind of fun too. My cuddle bug is, uh, is probably needing to be replaced. Let's see where that bag is. All right, so we have our three pieces cut from this die set. This it always holds right here, but that's nothing my scissors can't grab. Let me throw that scrap of paper over there. Okay, so we've got our three pieces up here. My biggest concern right now is just completing enough of this portion while we're live. So I showed you that I pulled the cloud stencil and I love the stencil um, I love all the different um, cloud forms here around the edges and I really love inking up the open cloud spaces with white ink a white pigment ink I use uh, picket fence distress oxide ink for that and uh, the last time I did I actually outlined um, the cloud shape with gel pen as well as inking with the white ink and that really made it pop, which was really cool. But, so I know we are making an ocean themed card and you're thinking, what the heck are you doing with the clouds? Well, if you look at this cloud border and you flip it this way, it really kind of looks like an awesome wave. You see that? So that's what we're gonna be doing here. Yeah, this is a really great stencil, Lou. <laughs> I'm gonna remember that. Um, <clears throat> one thing to keep in mind because it's got so many awesome uh, shapes on the inside is you have to mask over that. Oh, and I do wanna mention, Lou, if you didn't notice, we have all the negative pieces as well. So you could use some adhesive on the back, stick it down and just ink around it. <clears throat> so I like to try to stretch my supplies as much as I possibly can. So we are using the cloud for an ocean, hooray! And I have my handy dandy distress inks, not the oxides, just my regular ones, just because they fit up here a lot better and they're tiny. Do you think he's ever, Tim Holtz is ever gonna release oxides in these little mini cubes? Cause that would be pretty dang awesome, I think. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm gonna use this scrap of blue Yeah, that'll cover me up enough, I think. A cheapy <laughs> brush, blending brush, $1 blusher brush, angled brush from Dollar Tree, I think. And I'm gonna use Salty Ocean, you know, duh, ocean. And we're gonna start creating our waves here in the background. Let's see, my waves need to go this way, Marcia. I did have it right. So we'll just start inking up some waves. And this is exactly how I would use the cloud on the other side. Now, if you were using a watercolor paper, which would be really nice, and I might attempt it on this. If you sprinkled it with water, you would get those droplets. So we'll try that. It's gonna buckle a little bit, but I think it'll be okay.
Once again, it's an ocean card, some warping and buckling from water. Just, you know, lend itself <laughs> to the theme of the project. Let's see, I'm trying to um, vary the, the wave shape as we're moving along here. It's funny, one of the design team members in our group was asking which way people ink up their stencils, if they go top to bottom or bottom to top, and I am definitely a bottom to topper. I think I might have been the only one that was a bottom to topper, um, but it allows me to see where I'm going. That's why I do that. There is no right or wrong. I don't think. I mean, if there is, I'm, oh well. This method works for me. Okay, let's see. Have we used this side well enough? You see, I'm just shifting my scrap. I'm holding it here. Yes, my fingertips get inky, and no, that does not bother me. I could use the magnets on here, but I do need to kind of hold it somewhere as I'm working, so I think it works. And don't you love the variation in the wave? I think it actually, <laughs> it looks really cool. Um, to get to the top, you could do, now if you were using white, it'd be really awesome to do like a yellow up here. You could bring that down for the sunlight coming through. But since I'm using blue, I'm gonna ink blue over the top a bit. <clears throat> Just because we've got inked layers, um, so this spot doesn't stand out so much. In fact, I might ink the... Uh, this bit, let's see, over the front, we'll see. Now I'll leave it white right now. Okay, so let's put away, see my fingertips aren't too blue yet. Let me shift this over, I will wipe that off later. <clears throat> um, oh, I remember what I was gonna do for water droplets. <clears throat> I did have an idea. <laughs> so, I know, I'm excited. Lou is gonna be guest designing for Jaded Blossom next month. That's so exciting. We have a fun release coming up too, woohoo. So the Falling Hearts stencil. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys have attempted this technique. I'm sure some of you have. So the beautiful thing about Distress Inks are they're water reactive. So you apply water, it lifts the ink. You can do that through stencils. So that was my idea. I was either going to ink over it with more blue so you could see it more, but I think we'll try to do water droplets this way and we'll see how that works. So it's not too water droplet-y. That, that's a word right now. I'm going to take this, <coughs> take some water off here to the side. I've still got some blue there. <coughs> My dirty rag. And I'm going to just apply the water with my rag and we'll see how that works because I don't really want to wet it up too much. In fact, let me use these magnets so I can lift it and take a peek. Nope, I think I'm going to have to spray it. That is definitely going to buckle my paper more, but that's okay. Let's see what that looks like, if that works. If not, you can use, oh, oh, okay. So we'll see what happens there. It might just dry and not do anything. <clears throat> and I don't have my white ink. Uh, not really, not really what I was looking for. All right. <clears throat> see, sometimes the ideas don't work. And I don't have my embossing pad or we could dry emboss this over the tag. That could look really cool too, but. We will not do that, let's see. I'll just lay it over here. I was gonna see if I could line it up over what I had there. That's okay, we'll just lay it over here. And again, if I had it handy, I would use my Picket Fence Distress Oxide ink, but I do not have it and the water pickup did not work. I think it's just because it's just not the right paper. It's not picking it up the same <coughs> as say, you know, using a watercolor card would be. So I'm gonna go back to that same salty ocean. There might be enough residual ink left on here, but I will tap a little bit off. 
We're just gonna go over and darken some of these little hearts a bit. I don't want it to be too stark against the background. Oh good, that's not too bad. Because I don't want them to stand out too much. I just want them to kind of mimic air bubbles in the water, if you will. That was the uh, idea. How are we doing on time? Oh boy. Yeah, let me just get it a little bit darker down here at the bottom. Where the inking was a bit darker. You can still see the wave. <laughs> I can still see where I tried to do the water pickup and that didn't quite work. Let me move these stencils behind me. I'm trying to keep all the items I'm using off to the side so I can make sure to list them out for those of you that are interested. Okay. So the gist of the card as it stands now is we have this really cool cloud wave. Um, inked on blue paper. I do find it's fun to use a colored paper if you're going to say like for an ocean. Start with a blue and then add more blue. Isn't that so pretty? I love the blue on the blue. And it kind of gives you the idea of that movement with um, the bubbles in the water. <clears throat> so we've got the wave, we have the hearts on the white. I love the blue against the stark white. I considered inking with uh, antique linen to kind of mimic that sand a little bit but I really do like the stark white. So I think I'm gonna leave that there. <clears throat> we are gonna have this here. I'm just gonna kind of set it up. I'm not gonna completely finish it, I think, on the live or it's gonna just get way too long. So we're, we're just gonna kind of get an idea of where we're going with this so we can figure out the rest of the placement. <clears throat> so Angel Fishy Dude, the dude fish, is probably gonna hang over here to the side. And I do want to stick these little creeper fish Yes, Kathy asked if I'm using a magnetic mat. This is the Make Art Station. I don't know if you guys have seen these yet. Pretty much it's just a metal board with felted magnets or it's a foam um, so it doesn't damage the surface and it's gridded. It was really cheap and I use it all the time now. It's actually pretty handy. Having the magnets, oh my gosh, that's a game changer for stenciling for me anyways. Um, I had the Pixie Spray to spray on my stencils and I just wasn't as excited about it. This just works a lot easier for me. Uh, so we're gonna use creepy fish. I wish I had googly eyes that size. So we're gonna put them in the background <clears throat> and then we just need to pick a sentiment. So one thing I love about lives is having you guys help me make decisions as you obviously did. See, I was gonna lean toward the puffer fish, but you guys voted for the angel fish and we're doing the tag. So <clears throat> since this is for my husband and we have a very fun, sarcastic relationship. Um, that's why I was leaning more toward the fish on sentiments. So since this is an angel fish, I think kicks bass, doesn't really work. Whale of a time, sorry you had a crappy day, would be a lot of fun, but I wanna give this to him for his birthday. So <clears throat> let's see. Holy mackerel, it's your birthday. That could be cute. Hope you like this cod. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Fishing you a happy birthday could be cute. I'm hooked on you. Mm, that's so sweet. Let's see. Anybody have? You're an angel. Now that would be appropriate, I suppose, but I'm not going to use it. Um, hmm. Any votes for sentiments? See, there are plenty of fish in the sea, but you're the only fish for me. I am going to stamp that behind the blue on the white. See? flapping tag card. So that will go on the inside. So I will be using that one inside. I had already settled upon that. So it'll be sillier on the front and oh so sweet on the inside. But I want something to go with these creeper fish. So what do you guys think? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Or you are officially the best. I love um, the font. Is that a font? I love the way this looks. It looks like, you know, the newspaper clipping letters. 
Let's see. Are you guys fishing you a happy birthday? I like that one too. Let's do that one. Fishing you a happy birthday. Let me find it. That'll fit on here nicely too. Thank you, Miss Crystal. And I will, let's put it on a little sentiment strip. I have all of my bazillion dies here behind me, so let me see if I can grab one quickly. Oh boy. Let's see, I'm not quite going to connect it. I'm looking for mini tag three. So let's see. I don't think it's going to fit on any of these. Ooh, maybe. I don't think it's going to fit on this one. No, those are too small. Let's try dies number two. I like the wavy one. That would be good because it'll mimic the wave. And I can shape it to fit on here. Mm. It's just kind of long for my liking. Maybe we'll use that one. Fish, yeah, I'll just use this one. Or maybe this one. There we go. I've got a smaller wavy one. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to cut that just from white cards. So we're keeping with that sharp white contrast there. Let's pop these over here. Oh, there it is. That's what I was looking for, but I'm going to use what I've got here. Did I just throw those tag dies in here? Oh, I did. Oh, boy. Let's see. We're using one out of here. Let me put that on this pile. Let me cut this one out. be about done or done enough for you to get the gist of what's happening here. Where's that scrap of white again? <clears throat> I'm going to die cut and then stamp because I cannot see through this uh, stamp, um, the die to line my stamp up. And again, the nice thing with photopolymer stamps is you can manipulate their placement when you stamp them which I have done before, which is lots of fun. So if you've got a spot that you want to add a sentiment that is curved and your little sentiment is not, you can curve that stamp baby on your block or your platform. Remember that. Okay, paper in the pile. No more die cutting. <clears throat> of course, I think I thought that earlier as well. Where is it? Here we go. So let's shift him up here. There was the die. And there. We're almost done, guys. Thanks for hanging on with me. I know this is, these always end up longer than I intend, but we're having fun. So let me hold this side down. Might not have to bend it. It'd be fun if I could, but it's a tight little space. I think we're just gonna roll with that as it is. Um, I'm gonna use black just because the fish is stamped in black, but I am tempted to use that salty ocean. But again, I think I'll use black because Mr. Angel fish is in black. There we go. Got that. Move my ink up here. I will not remove the stamp this time to save time. Oh wait, I will need to because I need to stamp those creeper fish. Okay, so again, we're working on placement. That'll go there, this'll go here. So we can get an idea of where everything's going. 
I will remove this. I don't think we need that anymore and this. But I'm gonna move some of this into my stamping platform so I know about where things are gonna go. Hold those down and let's add these little fishies. Cause I think they are so cute. This guy's going, oh man, not me. Hmm. I don't know, I kind of like it down here. I will not leave this in here when I stamp. This just kind of gives me an idea of where things need to go. Okay, so let's, I know I tipped in, but at least I already kind of knew where he was. I'm going to do second generation stamping, <coughs> which is stamping off the first impression onto a scrap piece of paper. <coughs> Pardon me. And then stamping the residual ink onto my paper so it's not quite as dark. Oh wow, Lou said her lives are usually around 90 minutes long. I know, here lately mine have been averaging about an hour. I do like them shorter if I can help it. Uh, let's see, do I have a scrap of paper? I do, mm, kind of. Oh yes, I do, over here. <laughs> my daughter's schoolwork, yay, she's gonna love that I'm doing that. Okay, so pink. So let's stamp up these super awesome little silhouette fishies in the background. Again, scrap of paper, not being particular. And then on my tag. See? And that's just enough in the background. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. If you had a gray ink, that would also work. You wouldn't have to do uh, second generation stamping on that. You could just flop it right on there. Even a darker blue or a similar kind of tone on tone like we did there would be really great. Oh, hi, Sheila. Oh, Anne-Marie, that's very sweet. I'm glad you think so. <laughs> Facebook Live Marathon. No. <laughs> I wish I could. That would be kind of fun. We could all ping pong, take turns, go all night. Okay. So I'm gonna put these again off to the side so I don't forget to list them all for you. And I am not going to complete the card any further than this, I think. Because again, I've got to decide how I want to. I know I'm gonna stamp that on the inside, but how I want to attach this. Um, if I want to use this part or not to hold it, because I've done this before and then just glued this on to hold them together, but it doesn't add a lot of stability. So I might score the back, that's what I might do, so I don't mess up the front. Score the back of the tag so it flaps open, or maybe I'll just stamp it on the back. So we won't bother with completing that part right now. Oh, oh okay. My sentiment decided to swim down to the floor. Fishing you a happy birthday. And our adorable little angel fish. And let's assemble. The front of it anyways. <clears throat> yeah, you know, Lou, I'm the same way. <laughs> My intentions are always, let's keep it to half an hour. And sadly, that does not seem to be my trend here lately. Again, I like to confirm my placement. You know, I could be using the grid on here to assure I'm a little bit straight. And again, you see we tried to keep everything um, real fluid just because it's a water-themed card. <clears throat> All right, so I'm just gonna use some foam adhesive. Oh, look, I got a tiny square. I just want to make sure the part that I stick down is not hanging off the card. So, where's the end of my foam tape roll? Take a piece there and just another little square for the nose. If a fish has a nose. Did we ever decide if a fish really has a nose or not? I don't know. 
Oh, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. Sheila just suggested using a brad so it can swivel. Thank you. Yep, and you know what? I think I still might do this, but cut it here so it'll give the look of that luggage tag with this piece because I love, I love how this looks on the tag. So I'll cut it and glue it on, but then stick the brad through it so it can twist. Perfect. Thank you, Sheila. That was a great suggestion. <clears throat> That's what's fun about these lives too. Man, everybody's got such amazing tips. All right, Mr. Fishy, it's time to go home. Here we go. So you see I used a bunch of different, product, um, different products to create this fun little fishy card that I will finish off camera. I'll do that for the sake of, but see, isn't that so fun? I love that we've included these little fish because they look like, oh buddy, you're about to get caught and that's not good, that is not good news. Um, so we've got our sentiment um, here that kind of mimics the wave motion again. We use the upside down of the cloud for the waves in the background, the hearts to give more texture, movement, emulate some ocean bubbles, and our adorable little water-colored angelfish. So I tried to hit all of the things, you guys, at least one person clicked on all of them. So we've got a masculine style, animal, beachy summer project. Um, thank you guys for joining. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this. Again, if you'd like to see more lives, for myself or I'm gonna volunteer the rest of the team. <laughs> Just let us know in the comments. Um, and if there's anything you want to see me do again, please just let me know that as well. So you should not be watching, just got your order in today. Well, there you go, see, inspiration. It's time to play. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Have a lovely evening and I'll catch you guys next time, bye.